Welcome, honor guests, to the land of TMS. I am the Busybody Baroness, and this is another comment video. Okay, I'm still at work. Nothing's changed. It's still very early for me in the day. It's not even noon yet. So let's get started on some comments. I don't have much work to do. I think the rest of this week is probably going to be really quiet for me. I just got to make it through the next two days. It seems like this week for me is going by slow. I wanted to hurry up because I want to get to the weekend. Robert's going to start us off in comments. He says, hello, busybody Baroness. Just wanted to say that I was very sad to hear about Sonya Edie passing away. Her character Epiphany will be missed. Take care and thanks for your channel. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, we're all very sad. It is. It just feels so personal, much more so than any other celebrity that passed. Like, I found myself crying for no reason like just she would pop into my head like a family member or something the last couple of days probably because I'm constantly we were talking about it and reporting on what's going on with her but like I can't imagine what her actual close friends and family are feeling if we're feeling like this you know what I mean so it's just really hard it's sad Lisa C says uh Britt will be hooked on um the third <sighs> I know I you know I'm going to say, let me take that back. I don't know. I'm not sure who's going to be hooked. Somebody is going to be hooked this week. Like I said before, if it's Britt, it was, it was an accident. They're probably going to go after Spencer or Trina. I'm telling you, it's not meant for it to be Britt. I'm wondering if she's going to get hooked on the way to her party, after her party, during her party. What's going to happen if that's the case? Artist 61 says, yes, I heard the hook is back on Tuesday. And Brit, oh, uh, artist is responding to you. It says, I heard the hook is back on Tuesday the 3rd and Brit is the victim and that's how she leaves the show. She might be in the wrong place. Yep, like Brando. Heather's the hook. It's just so stupid if that comes to be true, if we need to call those writers out on their calling. Yeah, call them out. That's why I put the thing up. You know, I really... <laughs> It's like they're not even trying. It was so many possibilities and avenues they could have went down for Esme's parents, for who the hook is. Why are they dragging it out? It's like they started something, forgot about it, came back to us like, oh, yeah, we got to finish this. You know, uh, artist says they said the earring was Ryan's first wife's, the one he killed in front of Felicia back in the day. Yeah. How Rory got it is the question of the day we need to go back to the convention between heather a uh, conversation between heather and ryan where they discussed that discussed that yeah she said the baby snatched as made when she was a baby snatched it it broke and that was that i don't she never really clarified what happened to the rest of the keepsake she just said that it was safe um she concludes, remember when Sonny visited Heather, the guard told Sonny Heather was his favorite and he would miss Heather when she was sent back to Darkham. I wondered at the time, why did we hear that conversation? Is that guard letting her out? These writers, geez, probably so. The same way she got the keys. I'm sure that's the same guard that she got the keys from to let herself into Ryan's room. Catherine Piper says, I don't know, but I think Jeff Weber is still in the mix somehow with Heather stealing Ryan's trophies. Then she may be setting Ryan up so she can turn him in and get a deal. I definitely think that she's trying to set Ryan up, especially now that she knows that he can walk and talk and move around. I'm sure she's going to try to cut a deal. Um, if he doesn't get caught and found out by them going to try to save Esme, and that's possible too. Um, and as far as the Jeff theory, you say he's in the mix somehow. I, he said he was, you know, when he left, he said a little told Elizabeth, he does, he hopes it's not another 25 years before they see each other. Somebody brought up in the comments yesterday that I read that him and Monica have, has a daughter. Um, I think I mentioned that it would be pretty good if they brought the daughter back to Port Charles or whatever, since Monica isn't being shown and maybe that'll be a way that they could bring Jeff back, but I'm trying to figure it out. Jeff might be as May's uh, dad. Like, that's a way for him to be in the mix. Elaine says, look like they're trying to put Sasha and Chase together. It looks that way. Sasha might be an option for Chase, 
Blaze and Chase, that's other singer. Um, I think they're going to put them together for a minute, too. Lisa says, I think, yeah, Heather knows who raised Esme, okay, has kept up on her life. Her adoptive parents must likely named her when they adopted her. Okay. So, right. Okay. So, that means, did you think that Heather knew her name when she was following Trina's case through the paper and on the news, like she told Portia? Did she know Esme was her daughter? Like, did she know that the other girl was Esme, her daughter, is what I'm wondering. Monique A says, Sam leaves someone who, oh, I think I read this one. Here she goes. She says, Drew needs to ask himself why Carly is so adamant about Willow not knowing who her birth parents are. Yeah, he's not really questioning why she's so against it, but she's fake helping. So, Sandy Moo says, thanks for the spoilers. You're welcome, Sandy. And Risky says, General Hospital should have stuck with Felicia being Esme's mother. They could have they could have Ryan drug Felicia and then taken Esme because Ryan was working on inventing projects. If you remember, Kevin got a call from DVX to come get his brother or they would have to deal with him. Ryan was apparently too crazy for even the DVX to deal with. And we still don't know what kind of projects Ryan was involved with the DVX. And I do remember Kevin told Laura this. I wonder do Victor and Kevin, y'all think Victor, I'm sorry, Victor and Ryan are... Because this made me think, right, um, that Ryan was working on something, like you said, Risky, do you, and we know Victor is up to some kind of old school something. So I'm wondering, is there a connection, I guess, between Victor, Ryan, and Heather? Oh, God. <laughs> the writers need to give us some clarity. Sandy Moon says, I'm done with the hook killer. I don't think the writers know who it is yet. They seem to just write stuff and figure it out as they go. That's exactly what I think is happening, which is why these storylines just go on and on with no end. And Lashanta responds and says, disappointed, like Liz's storyline, Marshall, Curtis, Austin, and Mason. Cody, too, what is going on with that? What the heck is going on with um, Austin? We haven't seen Mason in a minute either. I think you guys are right. I think they are just forgetting. Like, they're just starting storylines and forgetting about it. LaShanta says, remember, had the Weppers been sneaking out because Finn says she got some skin disease you get in the rainforest in South America. Fudge. So she's definitely the hook killer. That's where the skin disease came from, you guys. From her probably going to get the venom. From the exotic animal guy. That's where she got the disease from. From whatever animal she was using the venom from. So the writers are being lazy. Making her the hook. So they probably are going to be even lazier. And let her hook bread. Oh for God's sake. Um, thanks for that LaShonda. Because that alone just made me. Just pretty much solidified. That they're going to make her the hook. She continues, now Ryan said Esme found him because she had a trinket from the necklace with the DNA from his victims. Why is Cody constantly throwing hints? First Sam, now Mac. I don't like him. I don't. I still don't like Cody either. I don't care that he went in the Brit's office and poured his heart out to her. I really still just don't trust him. Sandy Moon says Mac and Dante looked really good in those uniforms. Who cares what Dante did as a teen? Cody is useless, sick of him talking about something that happened at summer camp. He's been on the show long enough to have a storyline or just get rid of him. He is not likable at all. Nope. They're trying so hard to shove Cody down our throat and I just can't accept him just yet. Um, Whatever Dante supposedly had done when he was young is going to come back to bite him. If he did assault somebody, he could have, you know, how they are with these secret children. Um, Anything, anything could come out of this one. LaShanta's back and says, y'all, Heather Weber escapes all the time. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I think I repeated. Hold on. DNA shows the scene where Rory got hooked. It's not going back to Darko. I'm going to read it anyway, just in case. She says, Heather Weber escapes all the time. Ryan killed his wife 30 years ago in front of Felicia. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I did. I read this at the beginning. Okay, so Sandy's going to end us off on this one um, with the Dante and Cody being useless. Like I said, yes, I totally... Agree 100% about them needing to figure out what they're going to do with Cody and give us more information on Dante's storyline to see exactly what he did. Or they probably don't even know, y'all. You know, like we just said, the writers start stories and don't finish them like they forget. So we just have to wait and see. Like everybody says, since he was a teenager, it probably does have something to do with some form of assault. Um, 
I don't know. Maybe he hurt someone. Maybe not necessarily an attack on a female like everybody is speculating. It could just be some kind of assault. And that's why Cody keeps bringing up the past because he covered for him. So, All right, you guys. Well, thanks for listening to me. I'm going to go ahead and get this one out and I'll catch you in the comments. <laughs>